In today's video, we're going to be using one of my favorite workflows. We're going to use Adobe Dimension and Adobe XD together to create this nice 3D landing page. We're going to start by creating a 3D illustration that's very simple and easy to do. And then we're going to render that and then add it to a UI layout that we create in Adobe XD. That's today's video. So let's go ahead and get started. And we're going to start off here in Adobe Dimension. But before we begin, I just want to let you guys know that the completed project file is available in the community tab for those of you who are members. I have the Adobe Dimension file and the Adobe XD file for you guys in there. So that's there if you guys want to download that. And also making today's video possible is Milanote. Milanote is a bit different than traditional software. It's more like working on a wall in a creative studio. It allows you to map out your projects, gather and organize all of your inspiration in one convenient place, and it also allows you to collaborate with your colleagues or clients in real time. As a designer, it's an essential part of my workflow, and this awesome tool is free, so check out the link in the description. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna be using the basic shapes here. I'm just going to grab a basic cube, and I'm gonna go here to the scale and just drag the X down to 0.1. And then I'm going to rotate my camera around. I'm using one on the keyboard to the front of this. And I'm just going to adjust this into the size of about a web browser. So this is going to be our starting point for our 3D illustration. And I'm going to slightly rotate this back about 5% on the Z axis or the Z axis. And I'm just going to put that into the floor just a little bit. And from here, we can create a duplicate of this. So I'm going to select it and hit Command-C, Command-V to create a second cube. And then I'm going to drag this one out from it. And then we need to scale this down. So the idea is this first rectangle in the background is our web browser, and this is going to be the page that we're building since this illustration is for a website builder. So to sell that this is a browser here in the background, I'm gonna grab the cylinder and I'm just gonna rotate this holding shift to get it to snap in these increments. I'm gonna rotate it to 90 degrees and just drag the scale down quite a bit. And then I'm just gonna position three of these here in the corner for the dots of the browser so that we have something like this now. To simulate elements of the page kind of falling onto this section right here, I'm just gonna copy this and paste it and adjust the Y scale to make this a rectangle. And then I'm just gonna drag the Z in just a little bit. And this is going to be the top of our web page in the illustration. So I'm just gonna submerge that into the second rectangle here. And then we're gonna have a sidebar and then just another rectangle representing the middle section of the page. So I'm gonna duplicate that once more. It's gonna adjust the Y and the Z till I get a good shape. And then it's hard to see because everything's one color, but I'm gonna align this on the right. Maybe make it a little bit wider. and then duplicate that with Command-C, Command-V. So now I'm gonna select the sidebar and this other rectangle and drag them out away from our illustration like this. And then I'm gonna have this one sinking in just a little bit more and the sidebar kind of falling in behind there. Then I might select everything except the back rectangle there and just drag it up slightly just to get it higher off the ground. So you can see it's kind of like a page falling into itself here. Now, now that I've got my basic idea out, before I add some little detail shapes to make this a real illustration, I want to make sure I get my camera position in a way that I'm going to be rendering. So that way when I'm working, I can make sure that it's going to look good when it's rendered. So I'm just going to get mine kind of at an angle. Maybe something like that. So once I have the camera positioned where I want, I'm gonna go up to this little star icon on the camera for camera bookmarks, and then I'm just gonna click a plus, and then you can name that whatever you want. I'll just leave it at view one for now. So anytime we rotate or move the camera around, we wanna go back to that, we can just select it, and it snaps right back to it. 
So before we add some little details to this, let's just add some color into this so we can see a little bit more of what's happening here. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the environment itself. So I'm gonna select that, go to the background color, and I already have my colors selected. This is a blue color. The color code is 5D, 5D, F8. And then I'm going to drag and select every element, go into the materials and just set them all to a matte. And for the browser, I'm gonna set that to the same blue color as the environment. And then I'm going to select the rectangle in front of that one, select the color, and now I need to unlink this. Since I set all of those as a material together, I need to unlink them or it will change all of them at once. And I'm just gonna fill this to a dark purple. That is 7C, 5D, F8. And for these three shapes, I'll be filling those to A189, FF. And lastly, we can't forget to set the colors for the three dots. So I'm going with a Mac themed browser. So the first dot here on the right is going to be green. Color code I'm using is 87FF75. For the middle yellow dot, I'm setting mine to FFD875. And for the farthest on the left, the red dot, FF7373. So if we do a quick test render on that, you can see our illustration is a little bit more visible. You can see everything falling into place, looking pretty good. Now the first thing I like to do from here is create some accent elements just to add a little bit of detail. So something basic like a sphere. So I'm just gonna drag a sphere in to the work area here. And I'm just going to scale this down and then drag it to the edge of our web browser. I'm just kind of putting it in the corner here. Maybe we have a larger one. And finally, maybe we have one more floating in front of the browser in the corner. We can scale that down just a little bit. So let's go ahead and give these a color. I'm gonna set this one in the background to a dark purple. So we'll give it a matte material. And then I'm gonna change the color code to 6E56D3. So it's very dark. And then for these other two, I'll select both of them holding shift and apply a matte color. And then on either one in the scene, I'm gonna click the arrow and then I'm gonna leave them linked so they both change together. I'll paste those to FF8575. It's just a nice orange color. And this is what we have so far. Now I'm just gonna select one of these, copy and paste it, and I'm gonna go through and randomly apply them as kind of a ground texture to make the ground bumpy. Before I do that, I'm gonna switch the color to our original background color just so it blends in with our environment. Okay, so now we have our elements of our illustration in. We have our accent elements, these circles, and then we have some texture on the ground with these circles as well. And if you want, you can go up to view and toggle grid, to toggle off the ground plane there, just so you can really see what this is gonna look like when it's rendered. So I'm happy with that. The last thing I wanna do is add a little bit of plants because why not? Foliage always looks nice in illustrations. So to do so, I'm gonna go back to my models and I'm gonna grab the cylinder, and I'm also going to grab a pipe. So I'll start with the cylinder, and I'm just gonna drag it forward so you can see it, and scale it down. Next, I'm gonna grab the pipe, and do the exact same thing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to position these to where they kind of look like a trash can. So what I have is the pipe just slightly bigger than the sphere. So it creates that little lip there. With both of those selected here in the scene, I'm gonna hit Command G to group them together. And we're gonna make a flower pot with this. So let's give it a color. Just going to apply a matte texture and then we'll fill it the same color as our background. For some easy plants, I'm gonna make a cactus, and I'm gonna do so just by grabbing the sphere and copying it, and then I'll just drag it over. 
And I'm going to scale this in the Y axis so that it's elongated like that. And then position it in the center of our pot like this. So that's going to be the base of our cactus. Then I'm just going to copy it, scale it down quite a bit. And then we're just gonna, we're just gonna stick it on the side and just rotate it slightly out. So that it creates a little bump like that. And we'll duplicate that and stick one on the top. So we have a little cactus. So with all three of our elements and our group selected, I'm just going to stick this into our illustration on the edges. And just to make this easier, I'm gonna group this entire thing together with Command G. So we have an entire group right here. And I'm gonna Command C, Command V to duplicate it. And then we'll just scale it down to make a smaller one. And then we'll rotate it to add some variation. And every now and then I'm just gonna go back and check our rendered view just to see what this is going to look like and if everything is aligning where we need it to. Copying it one more final time, I think I'm gonna stick one here in the corner. And then finally, let's change the color on all of these cactus elements to a yellow color. So I'm gonna use FFD175. And I'm just double clicking on each of these shapes to quickly paste that in. It would have been a lot quicker if I would have just changed the color beforehand, but hey, I didn't think of it while I was doing this. So make sure you change the color on the element before you duplicate it three times in the 3D illustration. I'm gonna make some further adjustments to the position on the ground elements, and then I think we're ready to render this out. All right, so that looks pretty good. I think I'm ready to render this. So I'm gonna go and switch to the render tab, and then I'm going to check current view. You can give this a name, and then I'm gonna choose the high quality, and I like to render it as a PSD 32-bit, and then you can hit render. All right, so now that that's rendered, I've switched over to Adobe XD, and I'm in the design tab. I'm just gonna select my artboard and rename this to design. And let's drag out some basic guides to speed up the process of creating our layout. So I'm gonna set a guide 92 from the left of the artboard, another one 92 from that, and then one on the right 92 from the right side of the artboard. I'm also gonna drag one down from the top that is 40 from the top of the artboard. And let's start here in the top right corner, we'll just zoom in and drag out a button using these guides. And I'm gonna go with 188 wide by 68. This is going to have zero fill and it's gonna be a border. So I'm gonna set the border to two and we'll add a nice round to the corners. So I'll set that to seven. Inside of this, it's gonna be our sign in button. So I'll just add in that text. And today let's go ahead and use my favorite font, Proxima Nova. To give our text some style, I'm going to set it to all caps, center align it, bump the weight up to medium, and I'm also going to add some character spacing. So here in character spacing, I'm gonna set this to 150, just to space it out quite a bit, and then bump this down to 16. So this is going to be the default for our other button that we're gonna have in this layout as well. So now that we have a sign in button, I'm gonna hold Alt and drag out a duplicate of that text. And I'm gonna go ahead and remove the character spacing on this one. Bump this up to 20, just to get it a little bit larger, and align it to the right. And also we need to remove the uppercase. And then I'm just gonna call this dashboard. And then I know I'm gonna be using 48 spacing in between all of my links on the left-hand side, so I'll add an extra 10 there. So that's 58 from the, from the left side of this button. Hold Alt to drag over a duplicate, and right here on this second-hand line, we'll start our links. This one's gonna be templates, hold alt, and 48 spacing in between that and the next one, and just repeat that process until we have three to four links. 
Since we had blue in our illustration, let's go ahead and double click on the artboard and just fill that to the blue we were using. Again, that's 5D, 5D, F8. And then we can swap everything else to white. And on our button, we need to swap the border to white and then uncheck the fill. For the logo on this website, I'm just gonna be using an icon that looks cool. So I have this planet one here from Box Icons. I'm just gonna drag that in. And then here in the top left hand corner, I'm just going to scale it up holding Shift and Alt to the width is about 30. Make sure it's vertically centered with our links and then we'll fill that to white. And with that, we have a decent looking navigation. To determine how wide and, and the spacing around all of our elements on the left hand side, let's go ahead and drag in our render. So if we open up our Photoshop file, I'm just going to uncheck the background and save this as a PNG. And then we just drag that in. And I'm just gonna align this visually, scaling it down slightly. And then I'm gonna position this where the illustration's kind of in the center of the screen here. And then I'll just touch our small cactus here on that guideline. All right, so that gives us a decent amount of room over here on the side. So let's first grab that button text. And I'm just going to scale that up to 20 font. And I'm gonna align that to the left. And this will be the company name. So I'm just gonna call it Portal Website Builder and align it on the guide. Below that, I'm gonna have a large heading. So I'm gonna type in some junk text here and make sure the character spacing is set to zero. And I'm gonna go with something like 80 and we'll bump up the weight to a black. I know I'm going to have multiple lines of this, so we'll convert this to a text area and we'll also set it to all capital. So it looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna drag out the size of this box and then grab some text and paste it in. So here I can just scale this box until I get the words to the width I want. So we'll go with that for now. And I'm gonna place that about 25, 26 points below this small heading. And lastly, we need a button. So I'm just going to grab the sign in text, hold shift and grab the border. And then holding alt, create a duplicate and drag it down here in the bottom. Then I'll just select the border itself and drag out the button till it's about 320-ish wide. That looks good. And then we'll center align that inside of this new button. And then I'm gonna swap the border and the fill and select the text, hit I for the eyedropper tool and set that to the background color, just so we have that. And then we can change the text. For the positioning on this, we'll just place this visually. I'm just gonna drag it to about 50 below the heading. And then for the positioning of this overall section, I'm just going to grab all of it and position it till it snaps vertically here on the website. If we turn off our guides, we can take a look at what we have. And this is our finished website. So that's how to easily create a 3D illustration in Adobe Dimension and use it in your website. Let me know what you guys think of the design down in the comments below. Thanks to Millinote for sponsoring today's video and making it all possible. If you'd like to check out their product for planning your next creative project, check out the link at the top of the description. Subscribe for more design-related content, and as always, have a great day, and I'll see you guys in the next one.